Well, whatever we do, we can't repeat the last project. Over budget and we miss the startup by six weeks. I thought the engineering was locked down early during the detailed design phase. That's the problem. The I.O. schedule and databases were frozen early in the schedule, before the process engineers could finalize their design. The design was a moving target, right up until installation. Why does the system engineering have to be so detailed and specific so early? Let's take the last project as an example. First, contractors define the process details as best they can. That defines the I.O. count and process requirements. That drives everything. We use it to calculate power, I.O., network communications, wiring, conduit runs, cabinets, even estimating labor and install time. Yeah, OK, but that's kind of simple math. What's so complex? Well, it's not simply the number of inputs and outputs. Getting the engineering right is the killer. And you have a ton of devices, so you have a ton of wires. Each device has to be marshaled and find its way to a specific I.O. card, which might only manage a handful of points. And there are lots of different types of cards. AI, AO, DI, DO, thermocouple, RTD. Yeah, okay, okay, I get it. And then each card has to be connected to a very specific controller which is controlling that unit. You have to design those connections for every device to the exact right connection more than once? Yep. You have to get that relationship right four or more times for each device. Multiply that by 10,000 devices and you've got a stiff engineering challenge with an inflexible schedule. And not to mention a mess of wires. Now you know why some people call it spaghetti wiring. And because it's so complex, the automation guys press us to have this figured out early, long before construction. They need all of that information so they can design the system layout, including controller and marshalling cabinets. And those are specifically designed for our process. You mean each cabinet is custom built for the project? That's why the EPC design engineers wait until the last possible moment to hand over the system design. So what do you do? Let's say you were smart and designed in some spares into your cabinets. But the last thing you want to do is start up a new plant with all of your spares already taken up. You can't very well bolt on some new spares outside the cabinet. So on our last project, we had to redesign two controllers and their cabinets in the field. So that's why change orders are so costly. And we can't afford to keep doing that, can we? Nope. But it's the way it's always been done. Of course, if you use Foundation Field Bus, that improves things a lot. You don't need all the I.O. cards and spaghetti wiring. But you do need cabinets for power supplies and power conditioning. What about wireless? We've added some wireless points for monitoring, and they work great. But I'm not sure we're ready to replace wired connections. Who knows? Maybe that's next. Man, <laughs> there has got to be a better way. The key is flexibility. If we could be less specific with the engineering during the early design phases, we'd save a ton of time and money up front. Especially if the actual process design isn't completed yet. Exactly. We need to be able to specify I.O. capacity without being specific about actual configuration. We need to design to like 90% um, accuracy early, then finalize the requirements when we're closer to install and startup. I'm not sure I follow. Well, like I said before, I.O. count drives everything, including cabinet count. What if an I.O. card could report to any controller? Kind of like uh, a cloud of I.O. connecting to a cloud of controllers. Yeah, well, now I'm cloudy. <laughs> no, seriously. If there were a way to electronically connect them, add I.O. one channel at a time to the cloud, but not physically wire each connection, it would give us tons of flexibility when we need it. I.O. expansion would be a snap. No worries about footprint or having enough capacity. No spaghetti wiring. Less copper and less engineering means less cost. Well, sounds good in theory, my friend. Yeah, it's a little far-fetched. The industry has been doing it the old way forever. I guess if it were even possible, someone would have figured it out by now. Yeah, but can we afford to keep doing it the old way? <laughs>